Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have Jingle All the Way. Well, jingle All the Way! No, I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, I can't do it. Uh, this is obviously the 1996 film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. Uh, it's an hour and 30 minutes long, and uh, I actually have never seen this before. I saw all the bits Conan O'Brien <laughs> uh, did with the. Well, Robert Smigel doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, uh, you know. You'll have to look it up. Conan O'Brien, Schwarzenegger, Jingle All the Way. It's on YouTube, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Jingle All the Way. It's really, really funny stuff. But this was... I liked it more than I thought I would. I thought it would be just absolute garbage. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's, it's not a, exactly a high-concept story. Um, and it puts Arnold Schwarzenegger, the former Terminator, the former, well, future governor of California at this point, and event now former, but so the governator, <laughs> the combination of those two, uh, is the star of this, playing a middle America <laughs> dad uh, with an Austrian accent, uh, tasked with trying to get the hottest toy available that Christmas, Turbo Man who is basically kind of a it, it's a it's a TV series that kind of has a Power Rangers feel to it that that production quality of Power Rangers uh, <laughs> but very American and uh, his action figure or doll as they keep calling it uh, which is a good 12 inch figure at least 12 15 inch tall figure um, is the hottest thing in the world. Kids love it, including his son, played by Jake Lloyd. Now, does that name sound familiar to you? Star Wars fans know that name. He is the first Anakin Skywalker. Well, not counting the one in the original trilogy at the very end of Return of the Jedi, but Anakin Skywalker from Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Uh, there's a really good chance that his performance in this helped get him the job, his infamous role, in episode one and yeah here he's seven six seven years old cute as a button he's adorable uh and he's good in it and i'm I, usually i'm really harsh on kid actors because a lot of the times it feels like some kids are just thrown into a role because somebody their parents know somebody in the business or their parents are somebody in the business and they just get a role and suddenly they're in a big movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't think that necessarily was a case with this. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's talented. Uh, whatever, I think a lot of the backlash uh, that was put on him in episode one, and I will talk about this eventually because I don't think it's come, I, we have not watched it as part of the random selection thing yet. Um, he, I think he was done dirty by the fans and I'm one of them. Uh, yeah, it's not the greatest performance in the world, and it's not the greatest Star Wars movie in the world, it's certainly not the greatest movie in the world, but the kid didn't deserve that crap uh, that was heaped upon him at such a young age. So anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Uh, Arnold is tasked with having to try to get this toy that his son wants more than anything the day before Christmas, and somehow stores are opening... And people, he's not the only one. It's, there's people scrambling at the toy stores to, to find empty shelves with no, no Turbo Man figure uh, available to anybody. And uh, Arnold comes in contact with Sinbad here, who's a mailman who apparently isn't doing his job and is really careless with where he throws every single letter and package because as they're racing against time down the street, sometimes in other locations, uh, as they as they cross paths or or whatever they <laughs> he just starts throwing packages at Arnold or throwing mail in the air like this isn't anybody's property it just really puts a really big black eye after doing the Muppets thing was that already yesterday? I've lost track um, <laughs> where they were like post office is great let's celebrate these you know hard working people uh, this is pretty much like, yeah, the post office is jerks, full of jerks. So, anyway, Sinbad, you figure he'd be a good-natured rival, and to a certain degree he is, but as this movie goes on, his 
part in all this gets really dark really fast. Like, he is serious about getting this doll, possibly more so than Schwarzenegger. And to the point, yeah, I'm going to spoil a few things here in case you haven't seen it, uh, but I'm not going to be too specific on how things roll out. Um, <laughs> at one point, in order to get the doll, he threatens somebody with a package. He pulls out of his bag and says, it's a bomb. And <laughs> and then he does it a second time within like three minutes when police arrive in order to make the police back off from him. He does two bomb threats. And, I mean, I realize it's 1996, and he makes a joke about, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm unstable because I'm part of the post office. That's not a good look either. Uh, that's really a really dated look. Um, so, yeah, that's... It's super dark. And then there's a big finale clash between Arnold and Sinbad uh, over the, the the doll. One is becomes in their possession. And the stakes and their... Who they become as part of this, it's... it's a little on the nose, but it's uh, it's really it's really over the top. I mean, honestly, it goes from fairly grounded, um, ticking clock, action adventure comedy with a lots of silly elements throughout. It's meant to be funny and it's meant to be exaggerated, but then it turns into a cartoon practically. It really does. It it turns into a less believable version of the. T Turbo Man TV series. Because, yes, Turbo Man take, makes, plays a big part in the final battle uh, for these toys and puts <laughs> Schwarzenegger's son, Jake Lloyd, in mortal danger. It's really crazy. By the way, this supposedly takes place in Minnesota, I guess, Minneapolis. Um, you can tell uh, at some points, you can tell they're shot in a real location probably not Minnesota. I don't I couldn't really tell, but so much of it, especially the, the big parade scene at the end, shot on the Fox back lot. It's just the way it is. I think it's it's either going to be Fox or it's got to be uh Universal. I'm not sure which, but it's it, it's 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 on a back lot I've been to before and it it's so obvious the buildings are not real. <laughs> I mean, they're real to a point, but they're facades. So, yeah. It's uh and the weird thing is there's a lot of licensed characters that show up in this, and I'm sure that there was no battle for licensing for it. Like, in the parade, there's uh, the Tick, like, the cartoon character, the Tick, uh, Cat in the Hat, uh, Bert and Ernie uh, from Sesame Street, all sorts of characters mixed in in the parade. Normally, you'd have to clear that, and I can't imagine they've spent money for a parade to... They just grab costumes from somewhere and they dress people up to wander around in a parade. That just seems really weird to me. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, it's a little dumb little uh, anecdote, but it's still, it's, it's still the idea that that was something that they did. Uh, one of the subplots in this involves Rita Wilson, who plays Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife, Tom Hanks' wife. Um, I'm pretty sure that was Rita, Rita Wilson, right? Yeah. Um, I'm really bad at this. I'm sorry if I if I'm wrong, but she looked like Rita Wilson. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, she is, of course, frustrated with her husband, who is not paying attention to her or her son. He's working way too much. He sells mattresses or something, and even like a day or two before uh, Christmas, he is just on the phone constantly taking orders and pretty much ignoring everything. He misses his kid's karate tournament or celebration or medals or belt ceremony thing he misses that and yeah he's just and he he, he forms a, a a rivalry with a policeman who shows up everywhere he goes played by robert conrad so it's it's a, it's a recurring bit with the cop who shows up at just about every spot but the big uh, the big subplot with Rita Wilson is with the neighbor played by Phil Hartman the beloved Saturday Night Live uh, actor and comedian and uh, Simpsons voice actor uh, he in, he's been gone many many years now and it's heartbreaking every time I think about it because he was so freaking talented I can't think of how 
uh, comedy and movies and everything else would be different if he had not been killed so long ago. And that's super dark to talk about now, but it's really sad. But he is, he plays a creep in this. He doesn't necessarily, he plays a funny guy. He plays a nice guy, it seems. Uh, but he is a bachelor neighbor guy who lots of other women seem to be really hot for. He is, he has a son. Uh, he's divorced. And, uh, but he seems to only have eyes for Schwarzenegger's wife. So, Rita Wilson. He's super helpful and friendly and does all the work that he does not, that Schwarzenegger does not bother to take the time to do because he's too preoccupied with work. Of course, this whole movie is about uh, putting the family first and, and uh, changing your priorities and everything else. And it it's a big culmination to help Arnold realize that. And I realize I'm not using his character's name because I completely forgot about it. But... Anyway, uh, I, I have to use the actor's name, and it just makes sense. It, it's easier to relate. I kept saying Jeff. Who's Jeff? Nobody's named Jeff in this, I don't think. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a bad film. It's, it's not a great film, but it's not a bad film, and it actually might be a good bit of noise to put on in the background during Christmas time because at times it's engaging some moments are actually I actually laughed out loud because they're just so absurd and goofy and yeah I, I, I I'm surprised that it went it went the direction it did I mean the the overall arc was kind of predictable but the kind of direction they went with Sid Mad was kind of just weird but yeah, it's uh, it's not the kind of movie you'd normally expect to watch. Uh, but it is definitely about the Christmas consumerism and and everything else. There's no there's no lessons about giving and loving and well, you know, there is actually there's a selflessness angle and there's a a giving and generosity kind of angle to it. But yeah, there's there's no real Christmas message for the most part. It's uh, just learning about putting family before um, work and everything else. So. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say about Jingle All the Way. That's uh, uh, some of these things. I, I when I'm watching this, I realize at one point uh, a radio s station uh, says, "Hey, we got a Turbo Man. You can win a Turbo Man um, if you call in now and tell us the name of the uh, the reindeer." And it turns out they both Sinbad and and Arnold are sitting at a diner having a cup of coffee and just resting from their race against time and i realized they don't pop open their cell phones they have to fight for a phone booth within the diner just to make the phone call and that's just 1996 and that means that this movie is 25 years old just barely 25 years old and that's the way things were it's just odd so yeah that's one more observation to make this longer. All right. Uh, since we, again, this is a part of our series, a Christmas series of 12 days of Christmas leading up to Christmas, of course. And I've picked out all the episodes for Christmas that are Christmas themed uh, to just to make things easier. So I don't end up with these picking these things in the middle of summer. The less I pick these things in summer, the better. And I don't have to wear this hat. But you're going to see me wear this hat for the you know, rest of this uh, series. So tomorrow we're going to do a short, and it's going to be a classic. Uh, it's called Pluto's Christmas Tree. And so it's going to do that. We're going to do that real quick uh, tomorrow. We'll see to Pluto's Christmas Tree, a uh, Disney uh, short, classic short on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.